Analytical Chemistry 2.0 by David Harvey. Chapter 2. Section 2D. Basic Equipment. The array of equipment for making analytical measurements is impressive, ranging from the simple and inexpensive to the complex and expensive, with three exceptions. Measuring mass, measuring volume, and drying materials. We will postpone the discussion of equipment to later chapters, where its application to specific analytical methods is relevant. Section 2D.1 Equipment for measuring mass An object s mass is measured using a digital electronic analytical balance. Figure 2.3 An electromagnet levitates the sample pan above a permanent cylindrical magnet. The amount of light reaching a photodetector indicates the sample pan s position. Without an object on the balance, the amount of light reaching the detector is the balance s null point. Placing an object on the balance displaces the sample pan downward by a force equal to the product of the sample s mass and its acceleration due to gravity. The balance detects this downward movement and generates a counterbalancing force by increasing the current to the electromagnet. The current returning the balance to its null point is proportional to the object s mass. A typical electronic balance has a capacity of 100-200 grams and can measure mass to the nearest plus or minus 0.01 milligrams to plus or minus 1 milligrams. If the sample is not moisture sensitive, a clean and dry container is placed on the balance. The container s mass is called the tear. Most balances allow you to set the container s tear to a mass of zero. The sample is transferred to the container, the new mass is measured, and the sample s mass determined by subtracting the tear. Samples that absorb moisture from the air are treated differently. The sample is placed in a covered weighing bottle, and their combined mass is determined. A portion of the sample is removed and the weighing bottle and remaining sample are reweighed. The difference between the two masses gives the sample s mass. Several important precautions help to minimize errors when measuring an object s mass. A balance should be placed on a stable surface to minimize the effect of vibrations in the surrounding environment and should be maintained in level position. The sensitivity of an analytical balance is such that it can measure the mass of a fingerprint. For this reason materials being weighed should normally be handled using tongs or laboratory tissues. Volatile liquid samples must be weighed in a covered container to avoid the loss of sample by evaporation. Air currents can significantly affect a sample s mass. To avoid air currents the balance s glass doors should be closed or the balance s wind shield should be in place. A sample that is cooler or warmer than the surrounding air will create a convective air current that affects the measurement of its mass. For this reason, warm or cool your sample to room temperature before determining its mass. Finally, samples dried in an oven should be stored in a desiccator to prevent them from reabsorbing moisture from the atmosphere. Section 2D.2 Equipment for measuring volume Analytical chemists use a variety of glassware to measure liquid s volume. The choice of what type of glassware to use depends on how accurately we need to know the liquid s volume and whether we are interested in containing or delivering the liquid. A graduated cylinder is the simplest device for delivering a known volume of a liquid reagent. Figure 2.4 the graduated scale allows you to deliver any volume up to the cylinder s maximum. Typical accuracy is plus or minus 1% of the maximum volume. A 100 milliliter graduated cylinder, for example, is accurate to plus or minus 1 milliliter. A volumetric pipette provides a more accurate method for delivering a known volume of solution. Several different styles of pipettes are available, two of which are shown in figure 2.5. Transfer pipettes provide the most accurate means for delivering a known volume of solution. A transfer pipette delivering less than 100 milliliters generally is accurate to the hundredth of a milliliter. Larger transfer pipettes are accurate to the tenth of a milliliter. For example, the 10 milliliter transfer pipette in figure 2.5 will deliver 10.00 milliliter with an accuracy of plus or minus 0.02 milliliter. To fill a transfer pipette suction use a rubber bulb to pull the liquid up past the calibration mark. See figure 2.5. After replacing the bulb with your finger, adjust the liquid S level to the calibration mark and dry the outside of the pipette with a laboratory tissue. Allow the pipette's contents to drain into the receiving container with the pipette tip touching the inner wall of the container. A small portion of the liquid will remain in the pipette tip and should not be blown out. 
with some measuring pipettes any solution remaining in the tip must be blown out. Delivering microliter volumes of liquids is not possible using transfer or measuring pipettes. Digital micro pipettes. Figure 2.6, which come in a variety of volume ranges, provide for the routine measurement of microliter volumes. Graduated cylinders and pipettes deliver a known volume of solution. A volumetric flask, on the other hand, contains a specific volume of solution. Figure 2.7. When filled to its calibration mark a volumetric flask containing less than 100 milliliters is generally accurate to the hundredth of a milliliter, whereas larger volumetric flasks are accurate to the tenth of a milliliter. For example, a 10 milliliters volumetric flask contains 10.00 plus or minus 0.02 milliliters, and a 250 milliliters volumetric flask contains 250.0 plus or minus 0.12 milliliters. Because a volumetric flask contains a solution, it is useful for preparing a solution with an accurately known concentration. Transfer the reagent to the volumetric flask, and add enough solvent to bring the reagent into a solution. Continuing adding solvent in several portions, mixing thoroughly after each addition. Adjust the volume to the flask's calibration mark using a dropper. Finally, complete the mixing process, by inverting and shaking the flask at least 10 times. If you look closely at a volumetric pipette, or volumetric flask you will see markings similar to those shown in figure 2.8. The text of the markings, which reads, 10 milliliters TD at 20 degrees Celsius plus or minus 0.02 milliliters, indicates that the pipette is calibrated to deliver TD. 10 milliliters of solution with an uncertainty of plus or minus 0.02 milliliters at a temperature of 20 degrees Celsius. The temperature is important because glass expands and contracts with changes in temperatures. At higher or lower temperatures, the pipette's accuracy is less than plus or minus 0.02 milliliters. For more accurate results you can calibrate your volumetric glassware at the temperature you are working. You can accomplish this by weighing the amount of water contained or delivered, and calculates the volume using its temperature-dependent density. You should take three additional precautions when working with pipettes and volumetric flasks. First, the volume delivered by a pipette or contained by a volumetric flask assumes that the glassware is clean. Dirt and grease on the inner surface prevents liquids from raining evenly, leaving droplets of the liquid on the container's walls. For a pipette this means that the delivered volume is less than the calibrated volume, while drops of liquid above the calibration mark mean that a volumetric flask contains more than its calibrated volume. Commercially available cleaning solutions can be used to clean pipettes and volumetric flasks. Second, when filling a pipette or volumetric flask the liquid S level must be set exactly at the calibration mark. The liquid S top surface is curved into a meniscus, the bottom of which should be exactly even with the glassware S calibration mark. Figure 2.9 when adjusting the meniscus keep your eye in line with the calibration mark to avoid parallel ax errors. If your eye level is above the calibration mark you will overfill the pipette or volumetric flask, and you will underfill them if your eye level is below the calibration mark. Finally, before using a pipette or volumetric flask rinse it with several small portions of the solution whose volume you are measuring. This ensures the removal of any residual liquid remaining in the pipette or volumetric flask. Section 2D.3 Equipment for Drying Samples Many materials need to be dried prior to analysis to remove residual moisture. Depending on the material, heating to a temperature between 110 degrees Celsius and 140 degrees is usually sufficient. Other materials need much higher temperatures to initiate thermal decomposition. Conventional drying ovens provide maximum temperatures of 160 degrees to 325 degrees. Depending on the model, some ovens include the ability to circulate heated air, allowing for a more efficient removal of moisture and shorter drying times. Other ovens provide a tight seal for the door, allowing the oven to be evacuated. In some situations a microwave oven can replace a conventional laboratory oven. Higher temperatures, up to 1700 degrees Celsius, require a muffle furnace. Figure 2.10 after drying or decomposing a sample, it should be cooled to room temperature in a desiccator, to prevent the reabsorption of moisture. A desiccator. Figure 2.11.
is a closed container that isolates the sample from the atmosphere. A drying agent, called a desiccant, is placed in the bottom of the container. Typical desiccants include calcium chloride and silica gel. A perforated plate sits above the desiccant, providing a shelf for storing samples. Some desiccators include a stopcock that allows them to be evacuated.